Hi, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Live with your awkward hosts, Ben and Rob. Well, the U.S. Navy has admitted that they heard a loud bang around the time when Ocean Gate lost contact with its missing Titan submarine piloted by CEO Stockton Rush. But why did they wait so long to confirm that it had imploded? Was the uncertain fate of this submarine extended to distract from something bigger that was in the news this week? I think you can guess probably a few things that were. Quite a few things. So join us on this Friday Night Live as we dive far deeper into this week's mysteries. On tonight's episode, we'll also have a discussion with John Vonko about two of the hit shows he's on, Chronicles of, the, of a Psychic Spy and the metal, Metaphysical Podcast with Rob. We'll also get into what is that green light that's on Jupiter? Kind of interesting, right? Then tune in for a Mandela Effect segment, the Dig Deep Live Q&A that we have, and the most popular part of Friday Night Live that's only on Rise.TV, the top 10 weirder news of the week. So let's get started, and we'll see you guys out on the edge. And if you're listening to our Edge of Wonder podcast, please give us a five-star rating and review so we can keep making this awesome show for you guys and also keep making this awesome content. Hey, Ben, so funny story before we get started. Sure. Um, I must have shot like six or seven episodes of Metaphysical yesterday. Mm -hmm. So after shooting, it was like eight or nine hours straight and just going hard from from the morning. And you know how shooting can just like totally wear you out. Right. Yeah, totally. Afterwards, we col- I collapsed. And today we were really tired, too. And Lindsay's like, I'm going to go take a nap. So she goes and she takes a nap. And afterwards, she says to me, she says, oh, um, I had a dream about you. And I was like, well, what was the dream? She was like, I was just kind of upset at you. And I was like, well, what happened? She's like, every time I tried to talk to you in the dream, you just started wandering around. And I was like, well, dude, just tell me if you need a break. And instead, I'm just like wandering away, just like looking up and stuff. And then she's like, later on, she's like, you just started trying to work out by climbing buildings and and jumping across them. And it was the most awkward thing I've ever seen. It was really frustrating. I was like, this is the weirdest dream I've ever heard. That That is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty funny. What did she say? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I said you and Rob didn't tell me that you changed your live schedule too, so I was super frustrated at both of you. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> well, anyway, um, welcome to Friday Night Live. And <clears throat> Ben, I, I prepared something funny and interesting just for you. And it Sounds is this uh, really funny Instagram post that I saw that somebody had to have made for this show and we're going to show it right here (laughs) show the whole thing walked into the kitchen yesterday and i said to my dad hey i'm hungry and my dad said hi hungry i'm dad (laughs) well we were having dinner and dad spilled his peas on the table he looks right at me and said, oh no, I have just peed on the table. Dad asked me, have you heard about the new movie, Constipation? I was all like, what? No. And he said, it never came out. Who even calls a movie constipation? (laughs) My dad and I were going past the aquarium. He said to me, how many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? And he said, ten tickles. Like, what? Oh, tentacles. (laughs) Hey dad, can you make me a sandwich? And what did dad say? Abracadabra, you are a sandwich. I walked in. That's it. 
What'd you think, Ben? <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. That was pretty good the way they did that. I like the drama, you know? <laughs> yeah. The documentary footage. Yeah. Great. That was really good, actually. That was pretty funny. It's like one of those things you're like, man, I wish I thought of that first. <laughs> I know. As every time I pick up Instagram, I'm like, man, these people are way smarter than me. <laughs> pretty funny. <clears throat> All right. What do you, we got uh, some Bendela effects here or what? Yeah, we. So, okay, this is one that we kind of talked about. However, I found new, uh, like, what do you want to say? Residue re remnants of this thing was C-3PO Silver Lake, you know, because there's a lot of debate, like whether he had this thing or not. Definitely didn't. And I, yeah, I, I seriously, I mean, none of the toys, none, none of the, the packaging. I mean, the only thing he had it on was in the movie itself. But so this is pretty interesting. I found some old videos and including a, the original costume of the original um, C-3PO costume on display in a museum. But Lindsay, if you want to show this first video here, this is actually from, <laughs> I'm not even sure. This is somewhere from the early 80s. You can just play this. It's fine. They're, they're just <laughs> Just keep on Star Wars. The really curious thing is, he doesn't have a silver leg there. No silver leg. No silver leg. Right there. You do, you definitely don't is see this. Silver like, leg. and this is like on one of these um, late night shows or variety yes, shows. It is. So yeah, they would have tried to be accurate, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, these are the original costumes that they have from the movie that they they brought on the set, you know. And you would think, like, oh yeah, we need to get this exactly right. That they would have C three PO's silver leg, and they don't in this. They even have like Darth Vader come out later and everything else. That they, I don't know if it's the original actors in this thing, you know, in these costumes. No, with with like C three PO and R two and and whatnot. But it's just super fascinating that you know. You can clearly see he doesn't have a silver leg in this one. Now, and, and uh, the next one, yeah, and this is where they come out and, you know, they have all the costumes and stuff. So, Lindsay, go to the next one. This one, it, actually, go go to the, the third one down, actually. That one's a little bit better. This one is the original C-3PO costume from the original trilogy. Uh, it, and it's the costume in a display in a museum in Los Angeles. So check this out. No silver leg. Weird. <laughs> Crazy. Find. Yeah. Very interesting with this. And I think the other video is the same, Lindsay, so you don't have to show it. But the last one here is a very interesting video because they're actually on the set of the original Star Wars um, before it was called A New Hope. And they're doing like a thing for a whooping cough, like a promotional video for it. And again, he doesn't have a silver leg here. And this is actually on the set of Star Wars. If a young child gets whooping cough, it can lead to pneumonia, brain damage, even death. <laughs> All you need is a little rewiring. A children need to be fully immunized. Which, and alas, so which many are not. movie was this the set of? Oh, the original Star Wars. The, this is a, when they're when they get to the Death Star, when they first get to the Death Star, and they're in that room, and um, that's when Ben Kenobi leaves to go, um, you know release the tractor beam and they're sitting in there and then they're like, Oh, the princess is, the princess is here. And then they leave and R2 and C3PO stay in that room. And then they have the calm and they're like talking to them and stuff. So super interesting anyway, to say the least. So um, anyway, I just happened to find that um, that earlier and I was just like, wow, you know, especially the costume and display. I think that one really is the one that really captures it because it's like, 
wait a minute, why would they have this original costume from the movie, but there's no Silver Lake? It's, it's just really weird. <laughs> anyway, and there's there's a lot more of the Star Wars ones, of course, but it, you know, you guys mostly know those. But I, I was just just happened to find these, and I'm like, wow, it's really fascinating. So, don't know. Pretty interesting, to say the yeah, least. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I, I, I mean, it's super weird because, you know, now like soon he had the, uh, a silver leg in the first one. He didn't have it in, Reper in Empire Stri or yeah, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Then he has it in Empire Strikes Back later. And then you and I, I remember we did, we were doing a live show way back in the day talking about this. And we were talking about Return of the Jedi and we showed an image and it was C-3PO sitting in the chair when he's like floating up and Return of the Jedi when, when, when Luke brings him up and he doesn't have a silver leg. We were talking about it. Now he has a silver leg. Yeah. <laughs> in Return of the Jedi. And That's uh, super weird. That one is weird to me because it's like, wait a minute. You know, he, he wait a minute. He didn't have a silver leg in, in Return of the Jedi. So you can't see it here. But it's when he's like he's like floating up anyway, and, and it's like you can see his whole body, and he has a silver leg there. But yeah, it's really weird because he definitely hundred there it is. He definitely did not have it in Return of the Jedi, and we were even talking about it, and it's like now he has it, and it's so strange, and it's very clear too. So it's just super weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> because like in in the new movies when i first saw c-3po and he had the red arm i could not for the life of me figure out why he had a red arm i'm like this makes no sense they don't even explain it in the movie and and then it wasn't until like way later and i started learning about the mandela effect and it was like oh my gosh it was because they thought he had a silver leg in the original one, which is why they gave him a red arm in the new ones. And, and it's just, it, it doesn't make sense if you don't know that he had a silver leg. So it's, anyway, it's super weird. So. All right. <laughs> what's, why? Up? what's up with RFK here? Oh, well, okay. So this is very fascinating. Well, let's just jump right into this before we start talking about all the things related and the weird stuff revolved around the Titan. Um, so RFK is saying that he will declassify all alien and UFO intelligence on day one if he's elected president. So you wanna you wanna play this clip? <laughs> Where do I vote? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the government knows with the American people are going so far as to claim the government is in possession of actually non-human craft. So we'd love to know your thoughts on this. If you think there's UFO intelligence that should be declassified, um, you know, rather than having this guarded closely, whatever it is by military and U.S. intelligence agencies. All I can say is if they got it, it's one of the first questions I'm going to ask. And I'm going to want to see the little fellas and their and their spacecraft. And I will uh, and then disclose everything that I can. I'll disclose everything to the American public unless there's some really compelling reason uh, not to, which, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't anticipate. But I I mean, I'm, I, I read the article by that guy, you know, about that whistleblower who's still in the military, and it just seemed very credible to me, but I don't know. I don't have any way of assessing it, and I guess they're taking it seriously on Capitol Hill, which I'm I'm very happy about. You know, I, I think everybody's curious about this. Everybody would love to know whether we're, we have, you know, <laughs> whether we have company neighbors in the universe. It's really exciting, and I think, uh, I mean, I would, you know, I would, that's the kind of thing I think we, we should share with the American people and have discussions, philosophical discussions about what that means for us and, you know, what that means for our planet and, you know, how that, and, and, and particularly whether it's a good thing for us to continue to, you know, spend so much money fighting each other when maybe we should be trying to make this planet livable mm. and have habitable and you know do all the other things i think it will be really good for us to know those things i, I suppose they want to keep it secret so they can you know weaponize those technologies or whatever they're i guess they you know they probably think they have good reasons for doing it but i think there's compelling reasons if they have that stuff that we should release it to people 
Are you a sci-fi guy at all, Mr. Kennedy? Wow. That's really Am I what? Are you a sci-fi guy? Do you have a kind of a broader interest in, in entertainment that's related to this kind of stuff? I would say that I always like science fiction. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, you know, I'm curious about aliens. I've never seen an alien. I have. I have <laughs> Do we, can we get it? Can we get it? <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Super I interesting. Make good points. You know? Yeah, no, no, it really, it really is. And it's just, it's just really, really cool. Later he, you know, he talks about how he will de- declassify like all the alien and UFO stuff, but yeah, I mean, he's absolutely right. It's like, I, I think the main reason why they don't want people to know about it is because th- they're trying to either weaponize it, either like physical weapons or, or bio te- technology, you know, like cloning and all the top secret technology, technology that follows, from that angle from it too so cern and all that other stuff so kind of crazy cern what, did they bring cern up in that no they didn't bring cern up and i'm just talking about technology as a whole right he, i mean he's kind of talking about weapons technology but it's like it could go even for deeper and further well, than that i think what was interesting about his reply there is that he he's under the assumption that if they were hiding it, it would be because they don't want people snooping around about the weapons technology that they've created from it, Mm -hmm. which is, which means he's thought about this before (laughs) because you'd have to, you'd have to think this through in order to come to that conclusion at -hmm. least and give it a shot. Right. And um, I think that's, I think that's, pretty interesting is that he had formulated ideas about all of this already and he was just openly sharing yeah yeah very not formulaic but more formed ideas rather i Mm -hmm. should say yeah and uh why don't we uh take a a a trailer break right now and then we're going to come back we're going to talk about um archaeologists discovering the world's oldest neanderthal cave neanderthal (laughs) <laughs> and then uh, and then, yeah, actually uh, coming up on eight, we're going to have John uh, on and we're going to have a, a cool discussion with him. So why don't we go for it? Attention, attention. Have you ever heard of the rivalry between Coke and Pepsi? What if we told you that Cola Wars were just a big scam? Ever heard about a certain U.S. president helping popularize Pepsi in the USSR? Or are the Soviet Union paid the Pepsi company in warships? Why are candy and cola makers like Nestle, Coke, and Pepsi sponsoring health studies? Why do internal emails at Coca-Cola look like they've tried to influence the World Health Organization? Have you ever wondered why the obesity epidemic is getting worse, even though we know sugar is bad for us? Well, Edge of Wonder isn't a health show. No, it is not. And we already know we should be healthier. But what we found about the marketing manipulation behind our food products? That you were never supposed to know. Don't drink the Kool-Aid about the sugar industry, people, pun intended. Ben and I are about to shock you by how little choice you really have in what you eat. There's been a deliberate push for sugar on the world's citizens, and Rob and I are here to expose it. Today, we'll uncover the smoking gun sugar marketing that just may reveal how our behavior has been conditioned for generations. So join us as we dive into the truth about the big food agenda that's been building and building and not just in your arteries. You won't believe what we found. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we save some of this stuff for John and why don't we just dive right into um, the Titan stuff before... Before John comes on, we can talk a little bit about this. So, sure. okay, cool. Cause yeah, there's a lot more. Okay. So there's so much stuff that came out about this. 
um, and so many questions that people have had since, you know, all of this has been getting exposed um, and the massive connections that I, I've been finding through all of this, including yeah. John S uh, Stockton Rush himself and with his own wife. So, um, so his wife, uh, for, well, we can first start kind of talking about her. Um, she is actually, believe it or not, she is the great, great granddaughter of, um, um, of Strauss who, um, what's his, uh, Isidore, I think is it, is it, uh, what's his first name? Is, is Isildur or Isidore? Uh, Isidore Strauss. So he's one of the people on the Titanic that, according to the whole conspiracy, they wanted to eliminate him from the Titanic because he was the one that was against one of the people that was against the um, Federal Reserve banks. You know, for the for the J.P. Morgan coming over and taking over the Federal Reserve. So she is the great grand, great 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 granddaughter of his which is super weird. And, um, you know, his wife decided to stay with him on the Titanic. And that's the famous scene where you see the old couple laying in bed and the water starting to rise. That's actually Strauss there and his wife. Wow. Yeah. So that is a really weird twist. Um, I don't really know if that has anything to do with what happened with the crash or anything else, but, or yeah, with, with, with the Titan, sub but that's a very interesting little tidbit there um the other thing Lindsay's bringing this up here now with stockton himself he's related to two very prominent families one of them is, he so he's a descendant of two signers of the declaration of independence dr benjamin rush and richard stockton and that's where his name comes from <laughs> Stockton Rush. So really? they were both signers of the Declaration of Independence. Interesting. And and from his other side, he's uh the Davies. He is related to the Davies and specifically Ralph K. Davies. And the Davies, um, specifically Ralph was one of the head people at Standard Oil of California. <laughs> So wow. both of these guys have like, or both like him and his wife, both have these like very interesting background with all of this stuff related to um, Titanic and, and famous people and everything else. So that it just adds more mystery to this whole thing. One of the questions that a lot of people are having is like, um, did the sub, the Titan sub conduct test dives and yes it actually did a total of 50 different test dives but um then you know, i it, it it's like over time i mean and actually james cameron was specifically saying to stockton because stockton asked james cameron if he was if he wanted to be one of the people to go down and james cameron was like no because i, I don't trust what you guys are doing and, you know, they were, he already knew that they kind of violated a lot of like, um, safety precautions. Exactly. All these safety codes and everything else. So, um, yeah. So anyway, and, and he didn't trust what the, what the submarine, the material that was made of from the submarine. Well, and, and James Cameron would know because he's yeah. created subs to go down very far into the Mariana trench. Exactly. And believe it or not, um, I know somebody here, a friend of mine in Florida, who um, actually wants to build his own submarine. And he was explaining to me that the submarine community is very small. Like everybody in the submarine con community all know each other because it's how, how, how like such a niche community. And he's met James Cameron even at an event. And he got forwarded an email from Carl Stone. Himself. Carl Stanley as a he's part of a um, he also Stanley submarines is what what he makes and they also do these dives and everything else and this Carl Stanley sent directly an email to Stockton Rush 
and he forwarded him the email that he sent to Stockton before this whole thing went down. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically in a nutshell, he's kind of saying, and um, he's like, I can say, and you know, other people share my opinion. This sounds like a flaw defect in one area being acted on by the tremendous pressures and being crushed damage from the intensity of the sounds. The fact that they never totally stopped at depth and the fact that they were sounds at about 300 feet indicate Indicated, indicated a relaxing of stored energy would indicate that there is an area of the hull that is breaking down, getting spongy. Now, this is this is on this is before this thing exploded. This, or imploded. this was on another another dive that they did. And he was like telling Stockton, like, yo, man, like I, I'm concerned because if you're hearing these sounds, you need to check your sub. And that's exactly what he's saying. Would you consider taking dozens of other people to Titanic before you truly knew the source of those sounds? Like he wrote this in an email to Stanley. And the whole thing is just like, you know, I don't think you should take any civilians down there. I think you need to figure out what's going on with the sub. Make sure you're 100 percent confident that this thing can handle it. Then if you feel OK, like you can do this. But he's like, I'm just stressing my concerns here and. Um, he says the worst case scenario of delaying diving until you have identified the defect making all that noise is some disappointed customers and financial woes. He's like, it's better to do that than taking people down there and then something goes wrong and you're going to have like a disaster on your hands. So it's nuts, totally nuts. So, um, that that's like a that was so, yeah so when i was forwarded that email i was like wow this is pretty interesting you know and i th and so of course now the navy is saying that they did hear some massive sound that happened you know um on sunday but then they didn't so, tell everybody about it okay so no, this is here. the strangest part of this story which is if they heard this sound on sunday and they knew that the sub imploded on sunday whether you believe that or not, why would they not tell everyone that, that, that this happened? I mean, and then instead for three or four days, while this Hunter Biden case is going on, while, you know, BlackRock is setting up all of this stuff in Ukraine to rebuild Ukraine. Exactly. <laughs> everybody's focused on this sub. Right. I mean, yeah, no, that's exactly it. There's so many things going on right now in the news and, and actually, one of our fans, um, a long-term fan of ours, she sent me a message too. And she said, one of my friends was involved in trying to save the people on the vessel. Apparently, France had the tech and the equipment to do something about it. But there was all this red tape. And because of that, they couldn't really do anything. His friend worked for the Coast Guard and said that the whole thing was weird and strange as if they weren't trying to save them. So... My understanding, there's all this like, you know, like all this conspiracy and all this stuff going on. But my conclusion with all of this is that I think they just I think Stockton Rush was just just ignored all the all the red flags, went down there. Something went wrong. The, 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 the sub imploded. And then I think what happened was that probably the current administration and the media were like, OK, you know, we we we, we knew this happened. But we'll just draw this out as long as possible and put 24 hour focus on that. And that way, everything else that's going on in the, in the news this week will just get washed away and no one will talk about it. And I, I think I, I don't think that there's a conspiracy here involving like they were killed or something, you know, or didn't take place because there's a lot of there's a lot of questions about that, too. Like maybe it didn't happen and something else was going on. But I really do think it just happened. But I think that the whole thing has been covered up because they don't want people to focus on the Hunter Biden story because, you know, all this stuff was going on with him. Um, James O'Keefe dropped a massive video on BlackRock. Um, there was a, somebody internally at BlackRock and basically saying that, hey, if you have the money, you can buy out politicians. <laughs> Oh my God, I didn't even see this video yet. We have this video. So why don't we're, we'll sh we should show that when we go over to Rise TV later. <laughs> Amen to that. 
<laughs> so that's another big thing that came out. And I truly just think that they were just milking this as long as possible, even though that they knew it, it was done for, you know, it was just like, well, OK, now it's Thursday. Oh, they ran out of air. Oh, they probably died. Oh, by the way, we did hear an explosion on Sunday. That's like, yeah, that's just that? odd. Like in the the yeah, the timing of all of that is just it's just a little it's just a little strange. That's all. Yeah. And it's it's really sad because I, I, I think that, you know, and like one of the guys that they hire. Well, I know John Vivanco's here. We're going to bring him on in a second. But real quick, one of the guys that was um, had they had working for them at um, Ocean Gate. He was it was a 50 year old guy been doing this for years, probably like decades. And he went to Stockton Rush directly and said, hey, um, I am noticing that there's like a major problem with this. We need to fix this before we, we do any um, dives. And Stockton immediately fired him. He had 10 minutes to clear out all his stuff. And this, this happened just like I want to say just a week or so prior to all this going down. So, oh man. Yeah. And then of course they like, he fired everyone that was like a veteran there at ocean gate. And they just hired all young people, really inexperienced young people because they were like, we don't want old white guys here at the company to like manage things. We need more young people and diversity, which is good. But it's the same time. It's like, you're, you know, if someone's life is depending on, <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. You, for this type of work, you need a very experienced uh, and yeah. rational people, right? Yeah, I mean, okay, it's lives, right? It's like it's fine to hire, uh, you know, a teenager to run. It's a small world at Disney World, but I mean, if you're going down to the Titanic, it's like I would like to know that someone's has done this a million times. You know, it's kind of like getting a surgery done from a doctor. You know, you want you. It's like how many times have you done this? You know, it's like oh, okay, you've done it like a thousand times. No worries. It's like oh, it's my first time ever doing this. It's like I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not not the best plan. <laughs> I agree. Anyway, I mean, it's sad what happened. It really is. But, um, you know, I, I, I just I, I just don't think it, it's quite the, the massive conspiracy that everyone thinks it is. I just think that the media just saw this opportunity and just like grabbed by the horns and just like this is what we're going to run 24 seven and we're just going to focus on this nonstop. So I think that's more really what happened. But um, and and the and the person's mother, um, the 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 Pakistan billionaire, um, his mother or his his I'm sorry, his wife spoke out for the first time, and she said that you know because their son was on it, and he, she said that his his son didn't want to go, but because it was Father's Day, he was just like, hey, okay, I'll go this because my dad really wants to do it. So <sighs> that's really rough. sad. Yeah. Stephen, you ready to bring on John Blanco? Yeah, so John Vivanco's here. Let's bring him on. I'm going to play trailer, then he'll be coming on. All right, sounds good. The strange. The paranormal. The wondrous. It's all around us. But have you ever wondered if there's any truth to the mysteries left unsolved? Okay, so what is Mothman? We dive deep to get the answers. Well, the data showed this interdimensional rip in the space-time continuum. From government projects and paranormal experiences to otherworldly beings and lost empires, the Metaphysical Podcast covers it all. Join remote viewer John Vivanco and me, investigative researcher Rob Counts, for a show that's out of this world. I feel like there was a rip in the space-time continuum during... <laughs> I heard that, and I'm like... I sound, I don't know. I don't know. I, it just sounded so, I don't know. 
<laughs> you, you, you gotta get used to hearing yourself you know at first you're just like oh man that's what i sound like and now it's like when i hear myself it's i just hear myself as everyone else hears myself it was more about what i said it was more <laughs> about what you said yeah. <laughs> like, huh really <laughs> oh man oh, that's funny well john How's hey going? thanks for being here with us it's yeah. good to have you on good yeah i haven't seen you in a while so it's good to it's good yeah. to like connect with you john so wait i just like caught the tail end of um discussions around the sub yeah what so what's the what are the conspiracies around it well the conspiracy based on who some of these people were uh there's like stuff that people are saying that they were deliberately killed um another thing was like maybe somebody faked their death like you know because at first they they didn't they wouldn't confirm or deny that stockton rush was actually on the on the oh, side okay you All know right. they, they didn't say it until after the after the uh you know it went after thursday then right. then the company ocean gate confirmed it but right. but rob brought up a really good point which he said, you know, that could actually just be for the shareholders and they don't want to lose money and f right. finance situation. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's probably yeah. a good point. You yeah. know, I didn't honestly I, I looked into everyone's background. I mean, there, there's some, you know, I mean, obviously, if someone's a billionaire, they have it's just multiple different connections. You could say different right. things. I truly didn't find anything like really nefarious with any of these people. Um, the other weird thing was that, you know, one of the guys that was on, um, uh, I forget his name, Ham Hamish, I forget his first name. Ham but Hamish? Hamish, yeah. He, um, he dude, was a- you called someone Isildur, Isildur earlier. A dude's from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, wait a minute, that's the Isildur. <laughs> I was like, that's Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I was like, did he throw the ring in this time, Ben? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, but no, someone was on uh, on Blue Origin. This guy, so he was on a Blue Origin flight with, um, also with, um, Bezos. Um, what? I'm sorry. Bezos. Yeah, with Bezos and another guy who actually died in a, in a flight, in a small in a small single engine plane. He was flying in New Jersey, um, and he died. His name is Glinda Veris. And he was also part of the Blue Origin crew. So some people are like, maybe there's a connection here, you know. Um, right. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I spent I spent really a good portion of this week diving into every aspect of this. Oh, diving into it, huh, Ben? <laughs> yeah. The jokes are on today. They are. What was what was your uh intuition on all of it? My my actually my original intuition considering they said that they lost contact with the sub and everyone's like, how come and there's not like a, any kind of like tracking device or anything else. My, my, and then they heard it, they did hear a sound. They confirmed that. So my, my initial intuition was that it imploded immediately. Right, okay. yeah, yeah. And, th but I'm, I couldn't understand why they weren't telling the world. That's what happened. That, I, yeah, right. That's the part that really got me, right? So yes. Navy comes out with this thing, says it, they, they captured uh, a sound that sounded like an implosion on Sunday, and then they don't share it with the world until Thursday? Exactly. When they ran out of air? Well, they supposedly ran out of air? Whatever. I mean, that part to, for me was just very, huh? Like, what? what's this? Is this for Media Circus? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. really, what's going on yeah. with that? That was strange to me. And I think a lot of people think that's strange. Even normal, normal, normal people think that's strange. Non, I'm thinking, just saying people who don't think in terms of there's a conspiracy all the time. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the really weird thing, you guys, is that, I don't know if you remember, but there was a book called The Wreck of the Titan that was written in 1898. Like 14 years before the the um, Titanic, Titanic, you know, and it was it was about a ship called the Titan that sailing between America and um, and uh, Ireland, which is kind of the same course that the uh, Titanic actually went went through. And it, it gets it hits another ship. It breaks in two and then it actually hits an iceberg and it, it sinks. Oh, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would like, why would you name your vessel after things that sunk? I know. Like, and then it's like the sub is called the Titan. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> and they're going to the Titanic, which is yeah. like what everyone is saying that, that so, so the rumor out there or not even rumor, I want to say like the, the big conspiracy is that JP Morgan got this book, which was a very unheard of book. It wasn't like a bestseller or anything. You know, people did not stop, start really purchasing the book until after the, the sinking of the Titanic. Right. And they, they even republished the book with like updated stuff and a new, new name and everything after the Titanic sank. So a lot of people believe that, that this was some, this influenced JP Morgan's decision to sink the Titanic. And right. The whole right. Thing got played out. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. So Lindsay, this is a very, it, it, I have to admit that this is a little bit kind of disturbing if this is actually what happened, but this actually shows what the implosion would look like. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, but like at the end, there's this like that kind of ridiculous. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but with within a split second, it, it would have happened. So they wouldn't even had a, had a chance to even know what happened before it happened. So right. Right. The, so I, I kind of find that as a little bit of a, um, I mean, I think that's better than, than being stuck down there for four days, knowing that you're just going to die. And you're it's just like a, there. it's like, like a 1990s CG <laughs> yeah. video game. Yeah, like, really bad. Like, yeah. Yeah. First version. Well, and, and honestly, I'm not, con I'm not convinced of anything here. And I'm not trying to be overly conspiratorial about this, but the fact that they four days later came out and said that it had imploded on Sunday or something, and there was all of this time, it just like, it looks like it, there's so many things here that make it look like a cover up. And I wish I, I wish I had more faith in humanity at this point in my life, but it's it just looks really odd like all of the well like the way that it unfolded you know uh, okay so i mean look you know what i should look as, this is not something i really wanted to talk about but i'm just going to bring it up just okay. bring it up and and we have not officially remote viewed this thing right mm -hmm. other than like a little bit of stuff and being confused with the data right yeah okay so so this is not this is not official at all, mm -hmm. but I mean, everybody knows Heather, right? Heather yeah. Chronicles of the Psychic Spy. She's like, she works with me with everything. I'm just going to have her sit down with me and we'll just tell you like, so Heather, Hi, Heather. Got, everybody knows Heather. So Heather is a good viewer, very good viewer. She's on um, Chronicles demonstrating remote viewing. She, um, she's my partner in everything. Right. And so we do all of this stuff together. So Heather and I initially just now, this is not remote viewing data. After we heard what happened, we, we tapped into it intuitively, just right? Psychically, but not just remote psychically, viewing. Yeah. not remote viewing. And the big initial impressions that we found right out of the gate were what? Karmic karmic replaying of the the souls that were going down mm -hmm. they were actually on the titanic and there was this is a huge karmic cyclical process happening and so there's just like instantly I got chills. and this actually reminded me of an experience that i had long before i became a remote viewer where um okay so i spent a summer years and years ago um on on uh, the Great Lakes Historical Shipwreck Society research vessel called the David Boyd. And we know like the Great Lakes. So the Great Lake is is where they found that monolith, like Stonehenge, right? So okay. she's out. So this so is I Lake this Michigan. Out there with What's my, that, Rob? Lake Michigan then. Lake Michigan. Yeah. Right. right. So I spent a summer out there um, with my boyfriend at the time that was in the Coast Guard. And they had not made any 
finds in a very, very, very long time. I think the last thing they had found was like the Edmund, Edmund Fitzgerald. That was like their last one right. find. So they, you know, and they were like, you're just going to go out there and you're going to tow sonar around and you're just going to have a nice, you know, get in a suntan and just hang out on the boat. But I had one of those psychic feelings that come in where I get premonitions and I was told that I was going to find something of significance. And at the time, I was not open about my psychic abilities. So I just mm -hmm. you know, kept it on the download of myself. Well, believe it or not, within the first couple of days of us, it was just me and, and the captain, um, Tom Manesto, um, that was driving the boat. I was watching the screen while he was driving the ship. And I saw what looked like a giant stick. And I was like, that's interesting. There's a large stick on the surface um, that's showing on the screen that's coming up. And he's like, that's 100 feet down. That's not a stick. That's something huge. And what we were doing is we had a book of um, the Coast Guard's last recorded, um, the last recorded coordinates of where ships had gone down in the past. And we were actually trying to find the sunken vessel called the DL Clemson. Hmm. However, we circled around it with our sonar. We, we pinned the spot, but it was too deep to use diving equipment to go down. So it was, it was over a hundred feet. So it's not like we could just dive and go straight down. We would need more sophisticated stuff like what was used during the search for, for these guys. So we needed an ROV which was um, a research vessel that could go into high pressure areas and we could go and look. And what we ended up finding was the Cyprus. So wow. totally different ships, but here's where it gets really weird. Wow. The Cyprus was found by us exactly 100 years to the day that it had gone missing. This I remember, I remember. So, like the, the, there was actually one survivor of the Cypress that was known. And so what we did with the Great Lakes historical ship, and this is the unofficial story, you guys, the official story is completely different than this. So you guys are mm -hmm. getting the behind scenes story of like how some of these shipwrecks are actually uncovered. Um, so we found the, the relative. So one survivor of the Cypress that had gone down had a family through generations we found those family members and had this big banquet for them the great lakes historical shipwreck society did but all of this stuff is completely karmic related right and so it's like it's like the same thing with with these guys so that uh, just tapping into it it's like they were part of the initial titanic wreck and and here you have Water, water also, I feel like has this pulling memory, like, like it can pull oh my God, pull 100%. you into a situation karmically yeah. a lot faster or reveal a lot faster, mm. like when energy energies are aligned. And so like, this was sure. just literally these people reliving a death that they had they have previous, in previously. A previous life. Yeah. And so my karma was to actually find this shipwreck before. So it was actually me and, and Tom Manesto, who was actually the, the pilot or the, the driver right. of the ship at the time. Right. Yeah. But all this stuff is always karmically related. Right. And so that's cycles. Yeah. Yeah. And that's well, the thing. It's like, um, we're all going to die. That's the inevitability. Mm -hmm. And if this thing did just crush in a moment, I mean, that's not too bad. Right. I mean, it would have been much worse to, to be down there for five days running out of oxygen slowly. Right. You know, I mean, right. that's, that's what I mean. It's better that it just happened all at once. Now the other side of this. Yeah. Okay. So let me just say this. The other side of this, when we felt into it intuitively outside of the karmic stuff was that it seemed they could have been alive a little bit longer than what they're saying. And what was expected? Uh, that's that's what not remote mean. viewing data. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, cause it's possible when they lost, radio signal with them it is possible that you know because then at that point they don't really know exactly what happened right. so that, right that is a good point but right. you know it, it's really fascinating that you guys brought that up i i wasn't actually even going to say anything because that that's just because that's when you when you as soon as you said the karmic thing i just got these massive chills because that's kind of just 
from my own impression, like that was some of the things that I was kind of thinking about. And I was like, I, it wasn't anything I was even going to share on the show. It was just like, oh yeah, you know, I, I just felt like internally, I was like, you know, I think that there's, there's a karmic connection here that they had. Maybe they probably had past lives and that's probably why they were so drawn to go see it as well. Right. Well, and, drawn. Um, I mean, even yeah. drawn, like knowing, knowing that this sub is going to be dangerous. This submersible yeah. is going to be dangerous to begin with. I mean, come on, like that. It, there's your red flag. That's your, there's your sign that something's severely karmic happened. Yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. you're, you're a billionaire that is looking for that next like high. I don't know how to explain mm -hmm. that, but it's no, like you, you've, you've worn everything else in ordinary society out because you've got so much money and you're now looking for, you know, these, right. these pumps of adrenaline into your system that you're getting by, you know, going on, like going on the blue uh, origin or whatever it was, and then coming down into this uh, ocean. Um, what's it called? Yeah, no, the uh, the ship, the company that ran the the sub Ocean Gate, yeah. Right. So I don't know. It just it, all of that is kind of strange too. Where it's like, well, you're, you know what the the um, the jet man of Dubai, you know that you know who that was. So he was a very brilliant. wealthy Dubai prince. Oh, I believe. wait, you mean you mean the one who, who was on the 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 sub? No, this is a, this is a this is like in reference to Rob was saying a billionaire who's looking for that next adrenaline rush. So uh, he he was building um, wingsuits with jets. Yes, right, mm -hmm. and he'd fly around Dubai. Eventually, he just bit it. You know, he died um, wow. because okay, it's I like that. Like it's like at a certain point, you have so much. You've got like tons of money what are you going to do next? I mean, you, like right. here you got Elon Musk probably launching himself on rockets every other day. I mean, heck I would because I would too. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, if you so, can, you might as well, he's probably tweeting from Mars anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, it's, it's weird though. It's like you're, you're, you're kind of taunting death when you're in that mind frame. Cause you're not, right. you're not actually, you're not actually taking your life that seriously if you're doing that because i mean think about it there was every there was every red flag necessary for you to be like you know what this is probably isn't a good idea and to still go through with it right i know we could say the same about people's relationships sometimes <laughs> there's every red flag in the world but she's cute so you just go for it right that's a karmic attraction. It's the same thing with death. Like we, we all have so we all karmas that have karmic attractions to them. So that's hilarious. Well, yeah. Even, and like I was meant like when before you you guys jumped on, Rob and I were talking, and the um the mother of the of the uh Dawood, um, I, I don't I forget the guy's first name, I don't even know how to say it, but anyway, she finally opened up about it and she was saying that. Um, because their 19 year old son was on it with his father and he said he wasn't up, wasn't very up for it. And she said he was kind of reluctant to go, but because it was father's day, he was like, I'll, I'll go with my father because this is what he wants to do. Right. So right. It was almost like he kind of, it, it makes it sound like he, from the mother that the son just kind of knew something wasn't right about it. Like he just, there was like some kind of feeling he had about it. So. What's the what? Okay, so like this totally goes into the whole water weirdness side too. I think right because mm -hmm. it's like, what is it about water? I mean, it, when we remote view water, like oh, I mean, weird. it has memory. It's like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Heather it and does. I work on everything together, and and what we when we remote view water, <laughs> I mean, there's there's even weird things happening in the shower here. It's, I'm just it's like alive. You, like water is like <laughs> alive. <laughs> I'm just yeah. telling you. Like, like, so what is it about water and like the, the, the condensed memory of something? So if you have a shipwreck and yep. many people died underwater, I, okay. I used to scuba dive all the time, but I stayed away from shipwrecks intuitively. It's kind of like almost taking something from a tomb that doesn't belong to you, you know? Right. And, and it's like, it, it could have repercussions of karmic things so, built into all of that. Like the a treasure part, ghost. The saddest part about this conversation is most people would think we're crazy for having this conversation. <laughs> and it's so true. 
It's Lori being normie. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's like, I mean, I'm just, I'm thinking about like, imagine stumbling on this video on YouTube and you, you, you start listening and you're like, what the heck are these people talking about? But it's like, this is the world we live in and <laughs> yeah. no one's talking about it. Right. I forget. I forget like th that, that this could go to a broader audience. So um, <laughs> I guess, I, guess okay. I live in my own little weird bubble. Um <laughs> And no, but it's yeah. sad, right? It's like it's mm -hmm. actually sad because people aren't having they're they, they we've been fooled into thinking that everything is just so superficial and it's not. Nothing is simple. You right. know, I mean, even even like the like what you were saying, um, Ben, about like the you know, you take if you take something off one of those ships, like that thing has and has been like literally marinating in whatever haunting is going on down there. And you bring it up, weird stuff starts happening to you. You can't explain it. And then you start like making fun of yourself in your own head as if like, the, you know, like. Can you, can you imagine like you're just out swimming with your friends and you get attacked by like a sunken ship ghost? Right. Well, no. Yeah. Wait. If you're not already scared enough of the water as is, now you've got like that, right. sunken. Didn't that happen in, in that Ghostbusters like, too? No, actually, this should be a new show. It should be a new reality show where you go ghost hunting in sunken ships. In, actually, in your scuba gear. I there probably is. I mean, I don't watch. I don't like keep up on this, but I'm I'm sure that there is a show where they're doing that. These Guaranteed, days. the History Channel is uh, oh, is working on that. That's terrifying. <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine that guy with the big hair going down into the water, and it's going around really slow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it definitely, you know, I, th these are definitely thoughts that I've thought about too, especially related to the Titanic, you know, like the first time that I heard, you know, I think it was James Cameron that were, they were trying to go down there and everything else. And I was just like, man, you know, it's like how many people died on that thing. And, and I'm guarantee you, there's just that energy that is still lingering in that area, you know? Yeah. And then, and then, like you said, with the water and then like, Oh, all the water in the world is really connected. And you think about how ancient that the oceans really are, you know, and what, and if, if like, we already know that water has memory. Oh my God. Like what kind of memory really is whole is like with, within the ocean itself that has like millions and millions of years of, of, you know, even, right. even a billion years ago, here's this water. And it's like, wow you know really what is really in these depths of this water in the ocean you know and right it, and that was like that was in one of the shows that we did on metaphysical too where it was like um rob told this story of this guy on a ship who started he went into a cyclone or it got weather got really funky and so you had this this guy had this experience where he was seeing what mermaids and Oh, yeah. So mm. a lot of guys, they get stuck out at sea. Well, this is what's strange is they'll get stuck out at sea and they're going through what a, you know, a normal human goes through when they're sleep deprived and hungry. But what's strange is out on land, if that happens, you're not you're not you don't really get many stories of like actual hallucinations. But out on well, the I sea, mean, like when I fast, I hallucinate hamburgers and stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Different kind of hallucination <laughs> out on sea. It'll be like voices you're hearing uh, yeah. like of a siren right. trying to convince you to go down into the water. And it's going to like that. And it's consistent. Like there's loads of these stories. Like where where do those come from? And why is water different than everywhere else and then you come back on sea after being saved and you right. tell people try to tell people this story and they're like yeah you were just you know getting a little loopy because you were hungry and 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 you know you're sleep deprived but it's sleep. very specific to these like weird water mythological things that happen yeah right yeah hmm. yeah and then it's like you know maybe m maybe you are in a more sensitive state because your body is in fight or flight and you are actually more sensitive to otherworldly things that are going on. I mean, it is possible, you know, anything's well, possible. But. That's the thing too. So, okay. So, so Heather, Heather is so sensitive that like she picks up on just minute vibrations, like in general, like she's so sensitively psychic that I wonder, like when she told me that story of finding that shipwreck, I wonder if she's feeling the vibration of the water or the water speaking to her, or it makes it clearer like on. And so 
Oh, I mean, this almost is like, like a, a, this water is like amplifies a, uh, psychic abilities, large right. bodies of water. Amplifies it. Yeah. So if, if I have yeah. like always lived in places that were on the water or near the water, it would always amplify my abilities. So I've always, even when I lived in Chicago and I had a gallery there for like 14 years, I always made sure that my gallery was next to the water and that my house, my condo was right next to the water so that I could always have that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that was Heather. That was Heather when she was a child. Yeah, that was a photo of Heather when she was young. But so that's the thing. It's like, you know, I say, I say we get a boat, we grab a dinghy, we put her in the dinghy and we just cruise her all we, around. We tow some sonar. We get some sponsors to tow some sonar. No, she'll be the sonar. And I'll Dude, you guys, we'll just, sorry, can we back up for a second? Can you define it. dinghy? <laughs> it's a very small boat. It's a very small yeah, boat. Very small boat. And and so, she'll just well the reason for putting her in the dinghy is to get it get her away from anybody else's psychic energy. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, if talk well, in your brain. I'm just kidding around, but I mean when you get to Lake yeah. Michigan where she found that, I do think that there are other um strange structures mm -hmm. other than that Stonehenge. Right. Because uh -huh. because of the um Well Mothman. We've got the Mothman stuff there that it was related is, to a pyramid that is under the water. I there. think that there's a pyramid under the water there. Off yeah, the actually, in Chicago. um, so what right. I've heard, right even yeah. in the Gulf of, so I'm in Florida, you know, I'm actually on the on the west side of Florida, right off of where I'm at. Uh, I've actually talked to somebody who saw some kind of pyramid or ancient structure that's under the Gulf, and they saw it when they were scuba diving. But they went back really? to try to find it. And, and, you know, unfortunately, they couldn't find it again. But they're like, you know, we want to go. And they were, they were with other people, too. So it wasn't just them that saw it. Right. But I, I, they were, like, talking to me about it. And I was like, dude, that would be so awesome to, like, take a boat out here and try to, like, figure right. this out and, and, you know, try to capture something. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's like there is. And, well, you know, Rob and I were talking the other day. And Rob was talking something about how. You know, the powers that be may not want us to know everything that's under the water. No, right? definitely not. And it's a really good point because that would be the area likely where there where the Rewrite previous history. civilization would be sticking out of the dirt a little bit. Right. And we're talking, you know, we're not talking 100 feet of water. We're talking three to four hundred feet, which is a little more difficult to get to and, and beyond. I mean, think about if we had a continent that actually sunk, I mean, we don't know everything about the earth is a theory as far as how the earth ultimately works. So we don't actually know what the earth has done over these millions of years. And if a continent, a truly a continent has completely sunk. So what kind of remnants are down mm -hmm. there? I mean, I know that um, there's been a case to be made for, um, yeah, around Bimini, I think. That, oh yeah, Bimini. Well, yeah. the Bahamas. I get, right. The Bahamas are actually remnants of Atlantis. That whole continent there that sunk, and it's like right. what was left is basically the Bahamas. Right. So. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I mean, I think that that the hard part though with all of that is, no matter what anybody finds, it it goes up against academia, and there's where it just stops dead in its tracks. And it's, it's kind of like the whole UFO phenomena right now, where it's like you have literally stuff being shown to you that's in your face, whistleblowers coming out and saying stuff. And, and if the mainstream media doesn't focus on it, it goes away. That's all there is to it. It just goes away. It's, it, it just that's drops awesome. into a memory hole. And that is it. Because you know, they're telling people to be concerned about it or look at it or not. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking today about how crazy it is that all of this stuff is coming out about these ships. Right. And I I had uh, History Channel was on and Ancient Aliens was on in the background because they they'll just bring stuff up. They're like you get leads from there a lot of times yeah. like they have surface mm -hmm. level stuff. It's good. But they were talking about one of those uh, dark. What was it? Dark Knight ships or whatever. The Dark Knight satellite. Dude, that's, that's weird, oh, that man. Okay, wait. View. Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I got yeah, but, but, but wait, wait. Okay. Yes. Wait. But, but, the point is, but the point it is, is, is like we have am amnesia as a as a civilization where right. it's like even just a couple of years ago, this was being brought up. People were being made fun of. 
And now we're like all of it got swept under the rug. And now all of this stuff is coming out, legitimizing actual craft and people right. saying, yes, this is true. And yet is, is all of that stuff that, that was brought up over the last few years, is it going to get brought up again? No, right. it's not. Everybody forgot already because right. there's a Hunter Biden trial or whatever. There's like this stuff right. going on around the world that's like distracting everyone. There it is right there. There it is. Okay, so oh, that we've up. remote viewed this over the years, various times, different people. We get the same stuff. You, Lucky like, me, potluck viewing. You never know what you're going to get. One of the biggest things about this, exactly. It's like, you don't know what you're going to get. One of the biggest things about this is that remote viewers hate it because it's got this high radiation agitating energy coming off of it. Oh, man. Um, and it's an unmanned, it's an unmanned, obviously thing. And what else is alien? Yeah, there was ant yeah. beings. Really tall. Ant beings. They're, okay, yeah. so these giant ant beings, you guys show up in my house. Like, I'm not kidding you. Astrally. Like, big black heads like want to fight me astrally over like me poking around remote viewing into this thing and i'm just like trying to send them hearts and like love happy energy to get them to go away <laughs> like i'm just like poof here's a heart here's a heart like go away like but literally every time we've remote viewed on this thing that the 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 beans that are most closely associated with right. this are ant like beans and so it wow. makes you wonder like were these beans the same beans that the Hopi Indians talked about, the ant friends that, you know, helped save them when there was the last world cataclysm? Um, but these were really ancient beans. Like we've also ancient. run into like the ant, these ant beings when we've looked at stuff found in Antarctica. Really? So, so, so there was something about um, these types of what we say, we call them ant beings, but they're some yeah. type of yeah. being that looks like a bipedal ant i mean and i don't know it's like <laughs> it just it sounds ridiculous like, right hey guys there's large. bipedal ants out there you just really <laughs> so you need to be careful, be careful. <laughs> call your local pta <laughs> call your local pta <laughs> so it's like it's like i mean when we look at some of the stuff around antarctica and some of the stuff that's been found there when we try to find the origination of it we run into beings like that and they seem mm -hmm. seem to be a type of being who who's like a um, uh, what would you call it? Like really a, old old archetypal beings from different ages that had different types of technologies. It, like they were like like uh, what would maker beings or like they would they would make worlds in a yeah. sense. Mm. And some of the technology that that we've seen that's been under the ice in Antarctica. Specifically, the stuff that um, let's see, John Kerry went down to have went down there. And yeah, John Kerry yeah. went down there. They were they were going yeah. down there to look at this one specific. And, and actually, thing. the one the one guy that died on the sub, the 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 Harris or Hamas guy, he was with Buzz Aldrin in Antarctica together. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that was weird. some weird stuff down there. So they found this ancient technology, and they were trying to figure out how to use it. They right. were tinkering around with it. And like the way that the remote viewers put it was like, you know, they were like children just trying to like figure out like they'd drop an apple in it and then the apple right. would disappear and it'd be like, where did the apple go? And it was like, <laughs> yeah, put, put the apple in it. So like from a remote viewing perspective, we're like, okay, we got Tweedledee and Tweedledum dropping fruit in this like ancient technology machine, and you got these military people around, but then you got these big ant beings that are like, we want this thing, right. and we're like, okay, where did the apple go? So it's like you follow it with your remote viewing sensing, and you're like, wait a minute, it's like a, a deep atomizer it like somehow takes takes the takes matter, matter converts it to energy and aims it and shoots it at a planet that actually needs the energy so it can deconstruct so it matter convert, and turn it into, turn energy, it into energy and wow. put that energy somewhere else right for and use. redirect it so the ant beans that ironically we saw with the black knight satellite showed up and had interest right. in this ancient technology now they weren't the creators of this technology it was mm -hmm other more ancient beings that had right. created this technology, but the ant beings wanted it because they wanted to utilize it for their own purposes. Wow. That's crazy. crazy. There's, there's a comment here from yeah, cracking please. up and it says, maybe that's why Antarctica is called Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> ben. 
terrible. <laughs> that wasn't joke. for me, actually, but I, I'm surprised I didn't think of it first, though. You're responsible now for it, though. <laughs> All right. Actually, we, we do have to go over to Rise.TV, but we really wanted to ask you guys about the light that was coming off of Jupiter over the last couple of days. So could you stick around with us? Sure. Okay, so, so everybody um, watching right now, we're going to go over to Rise.TV. If, uh, if you'd like to support our work and come hang out with us over there, it's just $9.99 a month. You get a, tons of videos, like four to 500 videos on there of all kinds of awesome stuff. Chronicles of a Psychic Spy is over there, which uh, John has produced, which is awesome. He's uncovering mysteries of, honestly, the, the biggest mysteries that of, of our age. And uh, it's really, really great. And show. a lot of demonstrations of Heather viewing on that too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to head over to rise.tv now and uh, we're going to play a trailer. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the strange green light on Jupiter. Where did it come from? And then we'll have a couple of questions before. Uh, and before... we have our top 10 weirder news of the week too. So. There you go. All right. Was the fate of Atlantis a warning for humanity? We're often told that the ancients valued morality being in harmony with nature and the universe. But what happens when moral values plummet and human greed takes over? An Edge of Wonder series. But if you thought this was just going to be a boring history lesson, here comes the controversy. A redacted CIA document Psychic predictions come true. The Nazi secret search. Movies, technology, Plato, and more. What would it mean for humanity to find Atlantis? One of the more fascinating aspects in the search for Atlantis is a declassified document that is right in the CIA's archives online. Huh. What do you know? Yeah. Imagine that. All right. 